how to add a little see more button to gallery images that have a click through. So some of these images have click throughs and some of them don't. So he was hoping to have just a little see more button here in the bottom right hand corner of the image that would let people know that it's clickable compared to the images that aren't. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to use some custom CSS. So I'll just go to design and then custom CSS and we'll navigate to the custom CSS window. And then I always like to add comments at the top. So I can just copy this comment format here. And I'm going to say, this is going to be the gallery image, see more button. That way we're just staying organized in our custom CSS window. So if I right click on this gallery anywhere in here and click inspect, that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools. And if I just close these down a little bit, we can look at the structure of the gallery. So inside of the gallery wrapper, we have all of these different gallery items. And as I hover over each one of these items, you'll see the corresponding item get highlighted on the page. So it, Squarespace makes it very helpful to see which items have click-throughs and which don't, because items that have click-throughs get a class of has click-through. And then the structure of the item has to change as well. So for a gallery item that has a link, in the HTML, that item has to get a link. So you'll see this a href and then equals the destination link. So the items that have a destination link on them have to get this link in the markup, whereas an item that doesn't, so like this one up here, if I open the gallery grid item wrapper class, you can see inside of that element, there's no link around the image. But down here, we do have the link around the image. So there's a difference in structure. Now you might be wondering, well, items that have a click-through get a class of has click-through. So would we want to add our button to this element or would we want to add our button to this element? Now, we wouldn't want to add it to the gallery grid item class that has a class of has click-through. We wouldn't want to add it to this element because this element encompasses the text also. So if we were to position the, bo the button at the bottom right-hand corner of this element, the button would be appearing down here and it wouldn't be like in the corner of the image because this container contains all of the content, including the text. So we want to position the button relative to this element here, the element with the class of gallery grid image link, because it only encompasses the image itself. And therefore we can place the button in the bottom right hand corner. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy the class here of gallery grid image link and paste it into the custom CSS window, first adding a period. So periods are how you target classes uh, in CSS. So the next thing that we wanna do is we're going to add our button by using a before pseudo element. So what I can do here is write, um, after the gallery grid image link, I'm gonna add a colon and then write before. And then for the content property, this is what we can inject into the page. I'm gonna put see more. So basically what pseudo elements allow us to do is through the CSS, we can add elements to the page. So here you see my little before element appearing. And as I hover over it right now, it's in the top left-hand corner, but we can't see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a Z index of one. And um, we still probably won't be able to see it Nope, we can't, and that's because z-index only work on positioned elements. So first we have to give it a position, and we're gonna give it a position of absolute. And with a position of absolute, we can determine where this element is in relation to its parent. So right now, by default, it gets positioned in the top left, but what we can do is we can come down here and we can give it a bottom of zero and a right of zero, and now you can see it's positioned in the bottom right hand corner of this element. But we want to give it a little spacing. So let's do 10 pixels for each and just kind of see how that looks. Uh, it's still a little tight, so I'm going to go 20 pixels. Okay, great. So now we need to give it uh, a background color and a text color. So he wanted it to be the same color as the section background, the button background color, but he wants it to be 70% uh, opacity, and then he wants the text color to be the same as this text color. 
Uh, and he also wants the font size to be the same as this font size here. So I'm going to right click on the description so we can find some of that styling information. And here we have the font color and the font size. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these properties and paste them into my new button. So now we have the font size and the text color correct, but we need to add that background color. So what I'll do is I'll right click on the section and click inspect and we'll navigate all the way up to the outer section container. And uh, what Squarespace does, how they organize their background color is in the section, they have the section border and then they have the content in the section. And the background color is just nested inside of this section border element. So here, if I click on section background, we can see the background color. Now, how do we get the, the actual like color value? Well, if you hold shift and click on the color value, you can navigate through all of the different color formats. So we have hex, HSLA, RGB. So I'm gonna click through until I get the RGB and copy that. And now here, I'm gonna write background. Well, we'll paste in the RGB, but we're gonna convert this to RGBA, and that's gonna allow us to have an alpha channel or control the transparency of the color. So I have to add commas here. And he wanted 70%, so I'll give it a decimal value, 0.7. So now we have a 70% uh, version of that same color. So that's a cool little tip in the Chrome Inspect tools. Hold shift and you can navigate through the different color spaces. So now that we have our background color, we need to add a little bit of padding to the button because it's, it's not looking so hot. So let's add five pixels on the top and the bottom, 10 pixels on the left and the right and that's spacing out that button a little bit more. And you can see because we've targeted this class of gallery grid image link, which only exists on elements that have a background image, the button automatically appears on every element that has a click through, but it won't appear on any of the other elements in here. For more Squarespace content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.